By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have an, another game for you from the Reborn League. And if you haven't seen the first game, there's an info card appearing right now on the screen. You can click on there and it'll take you to game one. And the Reborn League is all about sealed magic. So these, uh, both of these players have opened uh, a pack of 4th edition, a starter deck, two packs of Chronicles and two packs of Fallen Empires and they were asked to make a deck and these are the decks that they've made and now they're going to play against each other and this is the second game in this sealed event on the left we have ron who's playing with a black green deck and on the right we have anna who's also playing with the same colors black against green so it's going to be very interesting um, to see here what kind of decks they have created from their sealed card pool and the interesting thing here to note is that um, the Reborn League is more than just one single event. The idea is that after this sealed tournament, the players are allowed to trade cards with each other, keep those cards separate from the rest of their collection and take that with them. And then there will be future events. I, I know that there's also a Fallen Empire event planned, an Ice Age event planned. And then you can build on your deck so that your deck becomes stronger. Uh, let's see they're going to roll the dice and let's see who gets to start here and the player on the left ron is the player that's going to start and like i said both of these players have chosen the same colors but the decks will probably be very very different depending on their pools and let's have a look here they start with a forest and an asp here by ron from the chronicles originally an arabian knights card a 1-1 creature and when it attacks, it leaves a counter, and and you can see it here, Anna is paying for that counter so that he doesn't get an additional damage. And also script, sp script sprites here, <laughs> a little bit of a tongue twister, tongue twister for me. Script sprites here by Ron, and the double attack, two more damage, Anna going to 17, and there's an armor throw from the Fallen Empires here, and it's a 1-2 creature that you can sack to put a plus 1, plus 2 counter on a creature. And look at that, a Frozen Shade. I've always enjoyed the art of the Frozen Shade. A 0-1 creature, and you can pump it with a black mana, and you can give it plus 1, plus 1. Here's another full swing by Ron. And playing yet another creature, the Elvish Scout. And the Elvish Scout is kind of a maze of if in creature form, you could say. Unfortunately, you do have to pay the 1 green. And there's a tally by Anna, and it looks like he's getting his counters. The tally gets a spore counter during the upkeep, and you can remove three spore counters to get a Suproling token. That's a 1-1 one, one green token. A lot of pressure here, and there's the Oasis, and it's an Arabian Night card. This one is from Chronicles, and it can actually prevent one damage. And let's see, Iran is attacking here with his full army. Well, he's not attacking with his Elvish Scout. And there's the block. And he's using the Oasis to save his Asp. That means that Anna is losing his... Uh, his Talit. And yet another creature. And this is interesting, this Shimian Night Stalker. We've seen this card in game one as well. It's a 4-4 body, but it's also kind of a veteran bodyguard. You can pay a black and tap it and it'll take all the damage that target attacking creature has done. So it's a very busy board state right now. A lot of creatures on Ron's side, side but they're all very small. Of course he can attack and then take the block creature that, that gets blocked by the Night Stalker. He can take it out of combat with the Elvish Scout. And I think that's probably his plan now, attacking with everything he has. And the Frozen Shade again, not looking very useful now because Anna doesn't have any swamps left to pump it up. So there is a block and there's the response with the Elvish Scout taking it out of battle. That means three more damage here for Ron, uh, for Anna, sorry. And that means he's on nine life. So what Anna really needs is just a bunch of blockers. And there's the Kumbaya Witches, and this is, or the uh, Kwambai Witches, it's, it's not the Kumbaya. Uh, anyway, it's a 1-3 creature, but it's also a pinger, so you can deal 1 damage to target creature, or actually any targets also to the player, 
and then the player can deal one damage back. So it's extremely useful in this current board state because uh, Ron has a lot of weenie creatures here. And there's the attack. And he's sacking now the armor throw, making it a 2-3 flyer. And I believe Anna is forgetting to use the Night Stalker here because he could have used it to soak up all that damage. Instead, he's taking two damage, going to seven here. And Anna is playing the Spirit Shackles, I believe that's the name. And it means that every time the creature becomes tapped, it gets a minus zero, minus two counter. And the counter is permanent, so it can also get multiple counters and slowly kill itself. So if Ron attacks, I believe Anna can kill it with the Kumbaya Witches. And oh, this is interesting. I didn't see that. He can prevent it with the Oasis, keeping it alive. And now he can deal one damage back. And look at that. This time Anna is using the Night Stalker. And there you can see how handy Oasis is when you're... Um, playing with a lot of creatures because one damage can make a huge difference in combat and there's the wall of bone a 1-4 regenerate wall and it's an uncommon from 4th edition so Ron took that out of his 4th edition starter deck I don't believe we've seen any rares yet and there's a hypnotic specter so the hippie is on the board here very powerful and as we can see, the Script Sprites is now a 3-1 creature. So if Ron attacks, it's going to die and it cannot deal any damage anymore. So he's probably not going to tap it for the attack. So that means that Anna is kind of safe for now with 6 life. And this is interesting. This is the Night Soil. And it's actually a pretty good card because you can pay 1 and you can remove 2 creatures from target graveyard so it can be your opponent's graveyard as well from any graveyard and then you get a creature in return a 1-1 creature and look at this there's also the altar Ashnel's altar and you can sack creatures to it to get two mana and then I wonder if um, if Ron has a combo with the night soil and the Ashnel's altar in mind and this is interesting that Kumbaya which is ping damage he's probably gonna ping again now to kill a creature but he is on 5 life, so he doesn't have the luxury of endlessly using the Kumbaya Witches. He is going to ping the Scripps Price, probably to attack with the Hippie. Although, no, Ron's hand is empty, so he probably is not going to attack. And this is another nice card you don't see often, Wall of Shadows. And it's a 0-1 wall, and damage dealt by creatures is reduced to 0. And that's what I like about these sealed events. Um, you're playing with cards that you never see. I mean, these are cards from 4th edition, Chronicles and Fallen Empire that usually wouldn't be played. And that's what makes this so interesting for me to look at and also to see kind of the synergies of these cards because some cards are actually better than you might think. And uh, Ron is now activating the Night Soil, removing his two creatures and in return gaining a 1-1 token. It's a green creature. And I like this combination with Astronaut's Altar, and I wonder, it would be really cool if he has some kind of synergy with that as well. He doesn't play with red, so a Fireball is, is out of the question, it seems. Maybe a Stream of Life would be nice, for instance. It's always nice when people just get random cards from these sealed packs and manage to like create some little, little synergies in their decks. Always cool to look at. And, uh, and Ron just one card in hand, Anna also one card in hand. Uh, Ron being on 18 life here and Anna on 4. But it's, it's, it's pretty much a standstill at this moment. And there is a Paralyze and that means that Ron is probably planning to attack and that's exactly what he does. He's feeling the pressure, because I'm calling it a standstill, but it's actually not a standstill because he's feeling the pressure from the Hypnotic Spectre by Anna. And there's the attack, taking a creature out of combat again, and at least dealing one damage. And when your opponent's on four, every damage counts, so he's going to three life now. Pace the tax of four to untap his Night Stalker there. Has enough mana, and I wonder if the... Uh, look, that, look at that, a Gasban Ogres. Uh, I believe it's a 3-2 creature 
from the Arabian Nights originally and it was reprinted in Chronicles and another attack by the hippie so Ron's going to 16 and what I wanted to say is I wonder if that frozen shade is going to be relevant later in the game now that we kind of get into late game and, and Anna has more mana on the other hand uh, Ron has that wall of bone of course and this is interesting because Ron is keeping a card in hand so that must be pretty useless and it's a forest so he's discarding the forest I wonder why he didn't play it out. Maybe just to create that idea that he had something. But now he is playing out his swamp and passing turn. Attacking again. And those flyers are now slowly eating away at Ron's life total. He's on 11. And Anne is on 3, but he's still on 3. And ooh, this is going to help him here. A dancing scimitar. A 1-5 creature an uncommon in fourth edition and originally it's from Arabian Nights of course because it's a set symbol and it's pretty cool to have a set where you have a set symbol as the creature and it's always one of those creatures the dancing scimitar where I think okay maybe it should see a bit more play I mean it's pretty good the stats are pretty decent uh, but it doesn't. Here's a double attack, so Anna is willing to sacrifice the script price just to deal two more damage. And that means that Ron is going to nine. But now Ron has a blocker for the Hypnotic Spectre, so it seems so he seems to be safe. Also has two targets there in um, or is it just one target? I believe there are two creatures there in Anna's graveyard that he can target with the night soil, though it's a little bit hard to see. This is interesting, he's attacking with the scimitar and he's gonna play something here. It's a health caretaker, interesting. It's a 1-1 and you can tap it to sacrifice a creature to take another target creature from your graveyard and put it directly into play. Now you can only do this during the upkeep. It would have been a lot more useful if you could do it um, at any time, but it is interesting here. And I'm just seeing a lot of graveyard kind of shenanigans here at Ron's side, so. I'm curious to see what else he's got and look at that he's using his night soil to create another 1-1 one, one token and these games are just taking a long time because you have to win with creature damage so you have to get through with combat although I guess some cards have finishers and there's a disrupting scepter that's saying nice pool by Anna, probably from the 4th edition starter deck. But it's not very useful at this moment. And also with Anna, you can see with the Hypnotic Spectre and the, um, the Scepter that there's kind of a theme in his deck. And I mean, Ron is passing turn, so that card must be absolutely useless. Using the Scepter, of course, and another Forest. And now he's deciding just to play it out. And they're passing turn again. So I think if Ron has a drain life, that would be a really nice out for him, for both players actually, because they're both playing with green. Um, other cards that can help here, or of course a hurricane, that would help Ron the most because Ana is on a lower life total. Also, just a pinger on Ron's side. Or a way to get rid of the Dancing Scimitar or in case of Ron, get rid of the Hypnotic Spectre. They're playing with green, so maybe they have a Desert Twister in their deck. Oh, and this could be a game changer. There's the cat. I'd say 2-2 two, two cats, I should say, because there are two cats on the picture. And it's um, a 2-2 two, two Force Walker. And that forest walk is crucial here because Ron has forests. And they're getting pretty low on cards as well, by the way. So let's see what's gonna happen. He's probably just gonna deal damage here, going to two life. And that card is really hard. Actually, it's impossible for me to see what that is because of the glare. Very annoying. And there's another attack, so, ooh, you know, Ron is going to five life. 
So he's on a three turn clock here. He needs to find a solution. He needs to kill that warrior. He needs to kill those cats. Has a card in hand. <laughs> Probably pretty useless because he's keeping it. And of course there's the scepter activation. And he cannot play it out. And this is interesting because earlier in the game he decided to keep a forest on hand and lose it. Um, he is now unable to play that uh, big 6-3 creature. And look at that, there's the um, scavenger folk. Oh, and there is the drain life we talked about earlier. He's top decking the drain life, and that means he wins this one. And that, I believe, really, Ron, you're really lucky, because that seemed to be your only out here, because that scavenger folk could have taken care of the dancing scimitar, and then um, he could have won next turn, attacking with the hypnotic specter and with the cats. So very close, very um, exciting game, nerve-wracking game here. And that means it's 1-0 uh, for Ron. And they're going to go to their boards. Because you can actually change your whole deck and sealed if you want to during the actual match. Uh, but we'll let these players figure out what they want to do. And we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two between these decks. So it's 1-0. Uh, victory here one win i should say for ron on the left playing against anna and ron is playing with black green reanimator and anna is playing with black green uh discard or at least i've kind of given it those names um because some cards in their decks do that but of course it's sealed and look at that a mind step throw here from anna it's a 2-2 creature and when it attacks and is not blocked he can choose to sacrifice it to force the player it's attacking uh to discard three cards from their hand. So this is actually a card that you see in the EC um, you know from time to time. There's an attack from the Black Knight dealing two damage here. Anna is going to 18 and there's the armor throw that we saw in game uh, one as well. So he can sack that one to give a put a plus one plus two counter on a creature. And let's see, Black Knight can be very strong, by the way, in this format. Uh, because it has protection from white, but in this uh, particular matchup, that's not going to help him. And there's the Frozen Shade again. Didn't do much in uh, game one, but I do think it has potential. So I'm curious to see if Anna can make more use of it in this second game. And Anna's here going to 16, there's the Dance and Scimitar. So we're seeing a lot of cards that we saw in game one as well. There's a tap for two forests. Oh, and this is interesting, a life force. And that can be very strong. It's an enchantment. For two green, you can counter a black spell. And there's a wall of shadows. We saw that in game one as well. And that life force can be pretty strong. With that Felwer stone also being able to produce green mana. Of course, he will not be able to counter right now because he doesn't have two green mana available. And Ron is reading his card. <laughs> That's what you see with this sealed event, because you're playing with cards that you never play with and you never see. So you're drawing a card like, what What does this do? How does this work again? It's not as much as an autopilot situation as you have sometimes with the uh, normal old school matches. There's a tap for green here. So something's coming. Is it going to be a giant grove? I don't think so. No, it's not a second phase, so it's a scavenger folk here. And there's a crawl worm, a 6-4 powerhouse here. And that spells trouble for Ron. Although he can, of course, sack his armor throw and make his dancing scimitar a 2-7. I wonder if he's going to do that. Looking at his hand at the moment. Maybe he has a way to get rid of that crawl worm. And again, Anna doesn't have enough mana to activate the life force. And oh, I've got to put it on freeze frame here. This is a Taggle Maggot. <laughs> this card is insane. It's uh, it's four mana, enchant creature. And as you can see, it's a book to read. Uh, as the players continue playing, by the way, uh, it says during your upkeep, put a minus zero, minus one counter on the creature to enchant. So it's pretty simple so far. When the creature dies, the opponent can put it can give it back to the owner and put it on a creature of the owner when the 
owner of Tangle Maggot, when there are no creatures anymore in play, the Tangle Maggot goes back to the owner, I believe, and it can then turn into an enchantment that deals um, the owner of the Tangle Mag Maggot one damage every upkeep. Um, I think that's what it does. But, uh, you know, it's a cool card to look up and actually read for yourself because it's just an insane, ridiculous card. Um, so let's get back to the game. Let's see what's going to happen there. So we see the Tangle Maggot um, has now made the Crawl Worm a 6-3 creature. And we see that Ron is at 14 life and Anna is also at 14 life. And you see that Anna has some flyers, Ron doesn't have, or uh, Ron has some flyers and Anna doesn't have a way to block them. So that means that he's going to 11 now. Probably going to attack again with the Crawl Worm, despite the fact that it's just a 6-1. Because if Anna decides to kill it now, the Taggle Maggot will go back to, uh, I mean if Ron decides to kill it now, I'm a little bit confused here, sorry. The Taggle Maggot will go back to Ron's side. And that's probably what's going to happen here. And we also see a jump block there with the Argovian Pixies. So the Taggle Maggot is going to go on. And I'm just reading it again. <laughs> I mean, this card is like insane and confusing. Maybe put it on the Dancing Scimitar. And he's going to put it on the script sprite so that means that the script sprite is now going to die because it gets the minus one counter and that means that ron can now put it back on another creature and he's putting it on the thrall there i believe now he's putting it on the frozen shade and that means that anna will have to pump it at least once every upkeep and of course the script sprites is dead and this is, just, this is just great when do you see a taggle maggot like in an actual game this is just ridiculous then we see the elvish scout card that we saw in game one as well and we see there the sec by anna taking care of the dancing scimitar here with the scavenger folk and there's a minus one counter and you see that swamp being paid to pump it up And as you can see, Ron is all out of flyers right now. And on is attacking. And there's the block. So that means he has to pump it up again. So he's making it a 3-4. And because of the Tangle Maggot. Okay, I guess it dies here. Oh yes, because of the Tangle Maggot, of course. And that means it... <laughs> <laughs> Look at that Taggle Maggot doing the works. I mean, it has killed so many creatures now. And eventually it's going to come back to Ron to haunt him and deal him damage. Because I believe when there are no targets anymore, it turns into an enchantment that says deal one damage to the controller or the owner. I'm not sure. It's a super complicated card. And there's the attack here. And now he can sack the thrall to actually... He's not going to do it though, but he could have done it to force Ron to discard his hand. And again, uh, I apologize for the glare. It's very annoying. But that card with all the glare on it is that 2-2 thrall that you can sack to let your opponent discard a card. Now, obviously he's not going to do it. And there we see the Night Soil activation by Ron, trying to find a blocker probably. And look at that, it's blocking both. So just jump blocking so that he's not taking any damage because he's on 8 life here and Anna is on 11. And as you can see, Anna now has enough green mana left to activate that life force. So that could become problematic at a certain point. And again, I'm kind of also liking the synergy between Tangle Maggot and Night Soil. Like the fact that Ron can make quickly make a creature to put the Tangle Maggot on and then give it back to his opponent again the next turn. And it looks... Is he going to activate the Night Soil or... I think that life force is also a problem here for Ron. 
activating the soil again. And it's a little bit confusing, like what have you removed, what haven't you removed? But he's killing the creature with the Taggle Maggot on it. And since there are no targets on Ron's side, it means he has to put it on his own creature. That's interesting. And that land should come into play tapped to uh, actually run. It doesn't really matter in this case. Attacking again. Making more tokens for the chum block and it's gonna die and that means it's gonna end up on the final creature and I'm really curious to see what's gonna happen when the taggle maggot has no targets anymore and this is interesting so it's not going back to the original owner because that's what I thought but it kind of sticks there with Anna and that means that Anna now has a problem because he has a time bomb and here's a Talit a token maker and he decides to trade it off here playing the ogress and it's uh, it's interesting here the taggle maggot is an interesting card I mean obviously it's a horrible way to remove a creature because it takes forever but it is funny to see it in a game like this And, you know, it is it is kind of slowly killing Anna right now. And, it you know, it's doing a lot of work. It kind of intrigues me here. I'm now thinking, do I want to maybe play Tackle Maggot? Trying to cast a rat here. Um, and obviously, Anna activates the life force. Just passing turn. And it looks like, by the way, we're on the um, last five turns here. That's why there is that little uh, dice there on the playmat. And that means that we're running out of time. I mean, this, these, both of these games have, have taken very long. As we see some combat action here, and there's the Kumbaya Witches. And they've already had three turns. This is turn number three, and they're gonna play two more turns because they're going up to five, I believe. There's a scavenger. Zombies, and actually, Anna is allowing it because it's not gonna make a lot of difference anymore. And this is number five, and that's it. That means that we've got a draw here, and because Ron won the first game, it means he's the winner of this matchup <laughs> I think that uh, yeah I want to get that the taggle maggot uh, back on the screen and I want to read it again with you because uh, I'm not sure how this card works so let's have a look okay so here we go here we have the card and the actual rules text the updated rules text so this is cards name is taggle maggot it's two black and two it's an enchant creature originally from the legends expansion Beautiful, creepy art, by the way. This is really a card to put in your Halloween deck. And it reads, At the beginning of the upkeep of Enchanted Creatures Controller, put a minus zero, minus one counter on that creature. So that's pretty obvious. So it's just a very slow way to remove a creature, right? But then we have a whole book, a whole chapter under there, under that, that line of text. And that reads, When Enchanted Creature Dies, that creature's controller chooses a creature that Taggle Maggot could enchant. If the player does return Taggle Maggot to the battlefield under your control attached to that creature. So in other words, when the Taggle Maggot has kind of eaten up a creature, it moves on to another one. And we saw that happen in the game where Ron played it on the Crawl Worm and then the Crawl Worm died and Anna put it on a creature of Ron. And that's where it kind of got interesting because at a certain point there were no creatures left on the side of Ron. So it went back to Anna. And let's see what it says after that. So if they don't return Taggle Maggot to the battlefield under your control as a non-aura enchantment, 
It loses enchant creature and gains at the beginning of that player's upkeep. Tackle Maggot deals one damage to that player. So I guess if there are no targets anymore for Tackle Maggot and it dies, then it's turned the, the creature that it enchants dies and there are no other creatures anymore. It returns to the battlefield as an enchantment that reads at the beginning of that player's upkeep, Tackle Maggot deals one damage to that player. And I guess that's what happened, and that's what we saw happening with Anna, who, who got kind of all of a sudden got a clock because of Tackle Maggot. Um, I think that's how it works. Um, if I'm explaining it wrong, or if you have some more information about this card, please <laughs> share it with me. If you're actually playing this in a constructed deck, also share it with me. It kind of looks useful when you're playing against a weenie build. Um, kind of useful. Anyway, um, thank you for watching this episode of Timmy Talks and this second game of the Reborn League with Sealed Magic the Gathering. Let me know what you think of these sealed matches. Do you like them or, or are they just super confusing? Or maybe they are both. Anyway, thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you'd like to see more old school magic games, Please, uh, you can click on the videos that are appearing on the screen right now. If you want to support my channel, then uh, become a member, uh, leave a like, leave a comment, all of that stuff helps. Uh, for now, thank you for watching and see you next time. <laughs>